This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 135. Relax for the same result and small actions changing self-identity by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Living Daily, the podcast that brings you the best in personal development and productivity every day of the week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Justin Mollick. Hello, hello. Come on, come all to Optimal Living Daily, Silver Sunday edition. I'm Justin Mollick, guitar hero expert. And I'm a little kooky today because I've been sleep cycling. If you have no idea what that means, I talked about it a long time ago, so you're probably new here, or you didn't hear the older episodes. And anyway, it's just where I keep sleeping later and later and later until I'm waking up like a normal person. Because, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I was waking up at maybe noonish because I'd go to bed at like 3 or 4 in the morning. And then it got even worse. I was going to bed at like 6 a.m. and waking up at, you know, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., something like that. And now I decided, well, I might as well just keep going later and later. So I started going to bed at 10 a.m., then like noon-ish. And yesterday I went to bed at 2.30 p.m. and then woke up at around midnight. So it's noon now, so my body thinks I'm supposed to go to bed soon. It's very weird. I don't recommend it. (laughs) Anyway, we should get on with the show, but that explains any kookiness that might happen in this episode. So I have another two posts from The Derek Sivers today. And before we get into it, I'm giving away a book by The Minimalists in exactly one week. And to be entered to win it, you just need to be on my weekly newsletter mailing list. You can join by texting the word OPTIMAL to the number 44222. That's the fastest way. Or if you're browsing around online, you can visit oldpodcast.com and join there. It's totally free, and you'll get a bunch of gifts from me just for joining. Plus, you'll be entered to win a book on the first of every month, which again is in just seven days. So you need to join before then to be entered. And I think that's about it. So let's jump right in and start optimizing your life. Relax for the Same Result by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org A few years ago, I lived in Santa Monica, California, right on the beach. There's a great bike path that goes along the ocean for seven and a half miles, so 15 miles round trip. On weekday afternoons, it's almost empty. It's perfect for going full speed. So a few times a week, I'd get on my bike and go as fast as I could for the 15-mile loop. I mean really full-on, 100% head-down, red-faced sprinting. I'd finish exhausted and look at the time. 43 minutes, every time. Maybe a minute more on a really windy day, but basically always 43 minutes. After a few months, I noticed I was getting less enthusiastic about this bike ride. I think I had mentally linked it with being completely exhausted. So one day I decided I would do the same ride, but just chill. Take it easy, nice and slow. Okay, not super slow, but dialing it back to about 50% of my usual effort. And ah, what a fun ride. I was relaxed and smiling and looking around, not red-faced. I was barely giving it any effort. I saw two dolphins in the water. A pelican flew right over me in Marina del Rey. When I looked up to say, wow, he sh** in my mouth. And I can still remember that taste of digested shellfish. I had to laugh at the novelty of it. I'm usually so damn driven, always doing everything as intensely as I can. It was so nice to take it easy for once. I felt I could do this forever, without any exhaustion. When I finished, I looked at the time. 45 minutes. What? How could that be? Yep, I double-checked 45 minutes as compared to my usual 43. So apparently all of that exhausting, red-faced, full-on, push-push-push I had been doing only gave me a 4% boost. I could just take it easy and get 96% of the results. And what a difference in experience to go the same distance in about the same time, but one way leaves me exhausted and the other way rejuvenated. This was really profound for me, and I think of it often. When I notice I'm all stressed out about something or driving myself to exhaustion, I remember that bike ride and try dialing back my effort by 50%. It's been amazing how often everything gets done just as well and just as fast with what feels like 50% of the effort, which of course makes me realize that much of my effort apparently wasn't effort at all, but just ineffective stress added on top of something to make it feel like I'm doing the best I can. Small Actions Changing Self-Identity by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org Have you noticed how a small action can change your self-identity? Last week when I was learning scuba diving in Iceland, I took a snorkeling trip to my dive spot first. The snorkelers did everything the divers did minus the tank and weights. 
So a week later, when I returned to dive for real, I felt a little like an assistant teacher. I was helping the other tourists who had never been there before, showing them where to go and helping them rinse their masks. Even though the day before I wasn't very confident about my diving skills, I had just got my scuba certification that day, taking on this role of assistant teacher made me feel a bit like an expert. By the time I got on the water, I was confident and excited. An hour later, I helped a panic-stricken diver get to the surface, really cementing this feeling. I think about the other tiny actions that changed my self-identity. When I was 17, I met Kima Williams, who taught me I could graduate college in two years, which gave me an identity as an overachiever. When I joined the circus at 18, I was unable to sleep in moving vehicles, so I became the designated driver of the circus truck. Having this role made me feel in charge, so I acted in charge, so I became in charge. After used to being the leader in this small way, I ended up being band leader of all my bands after that, and then started my own company. It just felt like, well, that's who I am. But how much of that was due to a decision to drive the circus truck? When I was 22, my girlfriend's hippie parents and the book Island by Aldous Huxley inspired me to quit my safe and happy job at Warner Chapel Music Publishing and to never have a job again. I was now an entrepreneur committed to creating a living from my own ventures. Hmm, well, maybe that last one wasn't small, but the one action of quitting my job became some kind of proof that I'm the type that avoids my comfort zone to step into the unknown. Recently, when I quit my company and was riding a scooter around Vietnam, a long-lost friend called out of the blue. When I told him what I was doing, he just said, yep, that sounds like you. Based on what? A series of small actions I've taken along the way, I guess. I could have just as easily made a single different decision earlier at 17 and be married with kids teaching guitar lessons in Chicago quite happily. Talking to a beautiful stranger, helping someone in need, starting a band. Like those life-changing coincidences, how'd you meet your spouse? Taking a small action can snowball into huge changes that create a new you. You just listened to the post titled Relax for the Same Result and Small Actions Changing Self-Identity by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org. Before I found this article, I'd actually already heard the story about how a pelican pooped in his mouth while he was biking in Marina del Rey, and I don't think I ever got that image out of my head. It's so gross. But he's a champ for enduring it and somehow still making it back within 45 minutes after that happened. Anyway, let's change the subject one last time. I'm giving away a book to a random email subscriber in just one week. So if you want to be part of that and get a few spreadsheets from me to help you optimize your life, you can text the word OPTIMAL to the number 44222 or visit me online at oldpodcast.com and join my newsletter to be entered on the first of every month. And doing that's a nice way to show your support for this podcast without spending a dime. And tomorrow I have a brand new minimalist author to join the show and it's a woman, finally. I feel like they're hard to come by in this uh, minimalist world and this author is someone who I tried to reach out to before but couldn't get a hold of her and I finally did recently so I'm really excited about that and hopefully you'll find her post as valuable as I do. So stay tuned for that tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits. Optimal Living Daily.